ask you to join me in prayer. Lord, we just move into a time of invite to your altar. We have moved from the singing of hymns, the power of prayer, the creed, the power of scripture, the time with the children. And now we move into that invite. And as we deeply look at James reminding us that both faith and works need to come together for the right reasons, Lord, more importantly, than just coming together. Help us come to the altar looking for a different level to bring that in our lives. In order to do that, Lord, help us be open to hearing you. Help us be open to hearing the Holy Spirit. I understand the distractions exist, but Lord, remove them just for a while so that we may want to hear you. And gracious Lord, I pray with desire, but also, Lord, with gratitude, humbly asking, may the words of my mouth not be mine, but the Holy Spirit's Lord. Help us all hear you, myself included. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we, we get into this series, uh, Faith in in religion or religion versus faith, what is the difference? And, and religion is obviously something we do, in my opinion, because we feel like we have to because we will get by or we will get to the right place or it will take care of other problems in our life. And if we just do these habits, the rest will fall into place. But faith is what you believe in. Faith is something that you and I actually see but we can't show it to others. We can't prove it. We can't uh, factually say this is the wind. This is the Holy Spirit. You have to believe it. You have to look at it through the lenses of faith. And because you look at it, there's an outward expression of an inward belief. Sometimes we get that construed with religious habits. We think if we do this religiously and this, this way, that will just help us. And really, faith is more important than even religious habits. When I was a high school kid and I, I gave my life to Christ out here at Camp Coronas, went back to the city for my senior year, we had cars, but not like small town people. We, we didn't have cars to drive into town or stuff. We used a city bus. Uh, we used bicycles. Bicycles are a great way to get around. And I was riding my bike one time back from school. I had a late practice or whatever, new Christian. I actually did this. You're going to laugh, but I did this. <laughs> my Methodist habits. My Methodist methods. I thought, well, if I pray with my eyes closed while I'm riding my bike, God will protect me. I'm not making this up. Yeah, some of you are like, oh, I know how this is going to end. By the way, I had a really good tip. This is going to date me, but I like biking. We actually went up to the North Shore. We had what you call panners on the side of our bikes where we brought our tents and stuff. So I had a nice bike, too. This, this even gets worse. I had a nice bike that I paid for. So I'm riding my bike, and I'm thinking I'm godly, I'm holy, I'm righteous. My eyes are closed. I'm praying. About five seconds later, I hit a parked car. <laughs> Nothing happened, but I did hear God distinctly say to me, you fool, don't do that again. <laughs> Open your eyes and pray. You can do it. See, we can, screw, we can screw religious habits, and, and let me be heard here. There, there are religious habits that aren't bad. Communion is a sacrament. We need to do it. Sometimes I think even more than once a month. I really do. Um, prayer. The Lord's Prayer. The Creed. These things are needed. We need to ask those questions in our daily devotion uh, on earth as well as in heaven. Or forgive us our, our, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What does that mean? But beyond that, sometimes we get caught up. I don't know about you, but I actually grew up in a church, and I'm not condoning this, where they gave attendance pens if you went to Sunday school every Sunday. Some of you can remember that. And, and, and you remember some of the elders of the church that walk around with five levels of bars like they lettered in Sunday school attendance. I didn't ever get one of those pens. My mom wanted me to, but she finally gave up. But, but you know, some of these things can come across such a wrong way. So the first thing we, we want to do is we want to take a look at what real faith is before we look at works. 
Real faith is something that you, you see, but you can't show. In Hebrews chapter 11, the book right after James there, uh, the author is, is, is taking a chapter in Hebrews, and, and he, he's trying to tell the, the Jewish believers of the Roman Empire that just like your Old Testament examples, the saints that have gone on before you, and, and I can think of them. I think of my granddad. I think of my father. I think of a pastor that I had who died early, uh, 56 years old, of leukemia. I, I can think of them. They've gone on before me. They showed. They showed what it's meant to have faith. Faith is the assurance. The assurance. That means that you feel in your heart that you believe God is real. In other words, even on election day, even when the candidates have done what they've both posted, even what the politicians have done, God is still God. I have the assurance in God, not necessarily election. The conviction. I believe that God stands for real faith. And I'm not giving up on that. When I have the cancer, when I'm in the midst of the divorce, when I have a problem with friends, when I'm being hated by someone, I'm not giving up on that. The conviction that I know this cross is real and I know heaven is real and I know where I'm going. That's faith. That's faith in the midst of the storms. That's faith in the midst of the joy. That's faith as you see a sunset over a deer stand or, or over Lake Coronas or something like that or over a harvest field. That's faith. And so we go on and, and James begins to give an example of maybe what that means. But before he gives an example, he, he, he wants us to pay close attention. I mean, Real attention to this verse that he starts out with. And this really hits it right on the head. It really makes us realize, why do I believe this? And what am I doing about my belief? Am I just going to go through the motions because that's what you do? Religious habits? Or do I really believe it? And, and James is a real tough, hard hitter. He, he's not worried about our feelings. He's not worried about sensitivity. It's a great book to read. It really is. What good is it, my brothers and sisters? What good is it if you say you have faith, but you do not have work? In other words, if I say I have faith, but I don't want to do anything about it, what good is that? What does it really mean? Why am I even believing it? It's like I'm going to work, and I've said this before. It's like the employee that says, hey, I promise you if you hire me, if you hire me, you won't even know that I'm around because of what little work I'll do. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you do not have works? And then he gives an example. And, and he talks about if a brother or sister is naked and, and lacks daily food. Just a simple example. It doesn't mean we're going to go out today and we're going to save the homeless problems. We're not going to do that. I, I always pray, Lord, I know that I get to eat tonight. And across the world, if not this, this town, there are people that are going to bed hungry. And I'm grateful for what I get to eat. I can't change that, but help me be mindful of it. So when I, the opportunity has come, I can do it. <coughs> James says, lacks daily. A neighbor, somebody lacks daily food. Right in our little circle. One of you says to them, even though they lack food and even though we have the food to feed them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill. And yet, you do not supply them bodily needs. What good is that? What good is that? I can remember one time, I was going through a tough time, it was several years ago, and I was at a, a pastoral gathering, and I thought that this one particular individual I could go to for lunch, and, and I just said to the individual, and we're actually very close to this day, we've worked through this, and We've talked about it, but it was years ago. I said, hey, can I have lunch with you, just you and I, and, and talk to you? He said, sure. That was like in the morning of the meetings. And, and we went and had lunch, and we got to lunch, and, and I started telling about something that I really wanted to get off my chest. I really needed to, to somebody just to listen to. And, and another person came to him as I was telling him this stuff, and he looked at me and he said, I'm not making this up, he said, hey, that's really great, but I need to go right now. But just know that, that, that I'm going to be praying for you. And I wasn't anywhere near done. And, and I needed that time. And it was as if he said, and I think this happens to all of us at time to time. It's as if he, he said to me, hey, that's really good that you have problems, but I'm too busy for him. I'm going to leave you alone so I can pray for you. 
James is telling us, don't put our faith on the shelf when people are asking for us to express it through our works. I don't know about you, but I've been to, a, to enough places, not just in Painesville, but I've seen what starving people look like. And it's not pretty. It's not pretty when, when, you, when you know that some of our children, the best meal they're going to get is at the school. It's not pretty. And all of a sudden, you and I are driven in, okay, what good is it to do that? And we're challenged as we, we come forward. And all of a sudden, we're challenged to think about, you know, what is it really that drives me in my faith? What is it really that is, is taking off with me in my faith? And, and he goes on and he gets even a little more direct. I'm not going to hit it all, but he says, before he goes into some demonstrations on that with Old Testament examples, he said, man, you know the demons? You know the demons? He said, the demons even admit, just like out of the book of Deuteronomy and the book of the laws, the demons even admit, just like the, the first commandment, that God is God. And they shudder. And he classifies as if we just want to be a works-type religion. If that's all we want to be, James literally says on the heart, we're no better than the demons. We're not doing any good. We're just no better than the demons. And it starts hitting me. How does my faith work itself out each week? How do I express myself? And he goes on and he, and he uses Abraham in Genesis 22, the Old Testament example where, where Abraham has promised a child late in life and him and Sarah finally get their first child. And it's just like a couple that's been wanting a child, wanting a child. And some of you are saying, I'm there, Pastor. I know that feeling. And you, and you get that child. And all of a sudden, this is a, an Old Testament thing. Don't misread it, okay? But in the Old Testament, they had example and example after sacrifice and sacrifice. That's how they showed gratitude to God because you didn't have Jesus Christ yet. And so God tested Abraham with his faith. This, this sounds kind of weird, but it, it is real. And, and he said, offer your only child. Do you love your child more than me? Are you willing to give your only child? And, and just before Abraham was going to sacrifice that only child, because he was really going to do it, God said, stop, I, I get it, and you are going to be the leader of nations. The stars won't even be able to count the faith that you're going to bring into this world. I remember a mother one time, and this is very true, a mother one time and I were talking because her son, who's my age now and has served, was signing up and, and went into the military, ended up in special forces because that's what he wanted, that was his dream. I mean, he worked out, he got there, he got there. And the mother was, was, was glorified. She really was. She was joyful. It's like, my son is pursued what he's wanted to do in the military at such a high level of honor. He got called up for active duty in the Middle East. And while she was glorified, she spent time crying and weeping because she didn't know if he was coming back. He did come back. And he retired from the military with honors. But that whole thing about I'm glorified and, and I, I, I'm honored, but I'm also praying that my son comes back alive. Faith at work. Faith in religion, crossing beyond the barrier of religion. And it's not just Abraham. We say, well, I can't be like that, Pastor. I, I can't be like Abraham. That, that's too good of an example. So then, then he goes down and he says, what about Rahab, the prostitute? If you go to Joshua chapter 2 in the Old Testament, Rahab was in the great city state of Jericho and, and, the, and, the, and the Israelites were about to take that country with just a ragtag army. But before they did it, they sent spies and this prostitute, Rahab, this prostitute knew that their, their God, the real God, was better than what she was doing. So she risked her life, hid the spies in her house and got them out of the city of Jericho without being hurt. That's faith at work. You say, well, I can't be like Abraham. I can't do that. Well, what about Rahab? The I mean, you have all these levels in society that we look at, whether we want to admit it or not, in different ways. James hits that whole area. And he looks at us, and he challenges us to think about as we are invited forward. How are we going to show our faith 
through our works this week. Maybe it's simply at the chow mein supper. Maybe it's in a deer stand. Maybe it's at our work. Maybe it's at church on Wednesday night. Maybe, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's, hey, I did part of this prayer visual. I got up at 2 in the morning. I want to do something else now because of that. Something is stirred, as John and myself say. My heart is stirred. And I want to do something about that. Maybe it's small group. As we come forward, we're being challenged to remember how it all started out. It all started out. What good is it, my brothers and sisters? If we say we have faith, but we have no works. And there's the challenge coming before us full circle. As I close, it was a Wednesday night. It was last February. Wednesday nights are long for me. It's not that I don't enjoy them. I, actually, I really do, but they're long. And when we get done and the church is locked up and things are done, you know, I, I just want to go home and, and I want to I get a, a, a little cup of chocolate chip ice cream and, and I want to watch Sports Center. That's all I want. Just, Want to be there. And it's about 8.30, and there was a few here, but the lights were, we were ready to go. And this gentleman comes in. It's February, he's cold, and I, could, I knew who he was because I had helped him within the last month or so, a couple of times. And, and I knew right away who he was, and, and I knew, great, Lord. Great, I know where this is going to go. And he was, the look on his face was in need. And not because he was being wasteful or, or just lazy. He was just in need. He needed somebody to help him. And all I could say at first was, Lord, it's cold out there. It's 8.30. I want to go watch Sports Center. I don't want to do this. And I didn't say that out loud, but that was the look in my head. And he just said, Pastor Bob, I can't get anybody. He was being evicted from his trailer, and he had a place to stay, and he actually had a job. And, and he just needed to get from point A to point B, and, and everything had ran out. He had, he had a place to stay the next night, and he had a storage for all his stuff. Uh, I'm thinking, and you want me to move you, man? It's 8.30 at night. It is 20 degrees out there. It's dark. And there's a fire in my house. It's warm. It's heated. And, and I can go home. And, and I went, and we moved. It didn't take three hours like I told God on the way with my truck. Oh, by the way, when I was driving my truck, I followed him in his car to his trailer. When I was driving my truck, it started snowing. That was even better yet, by the way. <laughs> I looked at God and I was like, really? Why don't you just bring on a blizzard? No, no, don't ask that. Don't do that. We moved everything. I'm not making this up within about a half an hour and 45 minutes. And he didn't even get my truck dirty. Can you imagine that? Those of you that know my truck... We smiled. We had a time of prayer. I was home by quarter to ten. It was nothing. It was nothing. All my whining and complaining for about five to three minutes to God was nothing. And on the way home, by the way, it stopped snowing as I went home. I just looked up at God and I said, man, I really, I really moaned about that, didn't I? And I hear God saying, yeah, you, you did a little. But it was joyful. He went to bed happy that night. He went to bed warm. By the way, he got a job and he's, get, and he's making it now. He's kept his job. And he stayed off his drugs. The point is not to build me up or anything like that. It wasn't that. It's just that sometimes these opportunities come up in our life in many different ways. It may be a, 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 a co-worker that just wants prayer. And if we go into that relationship with that co-worker, there is risk. It may be um, somebody that we have at church that we know we just need to be in ministry with. And we know it's going to take some risk. It may be something we want to do as a ministry itself. And if we start that ministry up, we know it's going to take risk. But James reminds us, what good is it, brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but... You don't have works. Or if you say you have works, but you don't have faith. And then he has this last verse, and it's serious. I mean, it's serious. James not is in, he's not in, interested in sensitivity, in case you haven't figured that out. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Amen. I'm going to ask you to just join me in prayer. Lord, tough stuff.
but it does bring us into this point of understanding the difference between faith and religion. And we have a lot going on this week, Lord. People come to this dinner because they know it, they depend on it, they live for it every year. It's the place to go on election night for this community. But it's not just that, Lord. It's, it's maybe in a Bible study we're leading or asked to lead. Maybe, maybe it's on Wednesday night. Maybe it's in our work. Maybe it's in our home. Maybe it's just starting to pray with our, our children before we put them to bed at night. Maybe it's just as a spouse's, Lord, to have some time together. Wherever it is, it's there. And it's time to take our faith and put it into action. I understand it's a risk, Lord. I get that. Faith is risk. Give us the strength to do it. And Lord, as we come forward to this altar, give us the grace. It doesn't have to be perfect. Give us the grace and the salvation and the assurance to say we can do it. Whatever it is, we can do it. We ask this, Lord, because we believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we believe in God, the three in one. And we believe it is faith in you. Salvation comes and we live. So, Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Amen.